All right, guys. In this video, we're going to be showing you guys how to rig for redfish, both live bait and artificial. Coming up. talking about it's beginning that time of year that the redfish are just fired up the weather's starting to warm up a little bit water time's starting to warm a little bit so the reds are all over the place right now so we're gonna be talking about you know what to throw what I prefer to throw and what live baits slash cut baits work this time of year and how to rig for that all right guys so we're gonna be talking about live bait first so basically this time of year, I know on in Florida on our coast, the white bait's starting to show up pretty heavy on the flats with the water temp rising. So basically I like to judge my hook size off from the size white baits I get. If I get a white bait that's, you know, that size, I'll use a two watt circle hook or so, which I have right here. And my favorite brand so far that I use has been VMC. I just have better luck with these guys so far than I have anything else. Ow. For sure. So, right there's a two op VMC circle hook. I would tie this onto a rod. I like using a seven foot six with a 35 to 4500 series reel with 15 to 20 pound braid. Always use 30, I use 30 pound and it's always fluoro. You don't have to use this specific brand. I just use basically kind of whatever I can get cheap at that given time. How I'd like to rig for using live white baits is you get yourself a sectional leader. Doesn't matter how long. Well, you know, usually about, I usually tie about three feet or so because you're going to get chafed by fish no matter what. So I'm not going to cut this off, but all you do is you cut that. You do your normal line to line, whatever line to line you like best. Now either you can tie a loop knot, your hook onto your leader with a loop knot, or a just standard like uni knot. Uh, I use both. Usually when it's the white baits first starting to show up to keep it as realistic as possible without looking like it has a hook in it, I'll tie a loop knot. So I like the canoe man loop knot. There's so many different loop knots you can tie. The canoe man's just been my favorite. All I do, Fold it kind of once, make a loop. Fold it twice, make a loop. Take that second loop, stick it inside your first loop. And then I pinch it. And I take my hook, slide it on, take my tag end and go through that second loop. Point it back down towards your hand, pull it tight. And you get something that basically looks like that. Keeps that bait kind of fluttering and doing its thing. I always trim off my tag end, leave a little bit. And when you're tossing white baits, there's multiple different ways you can hook them. You can either hook them anal fin, down by the base of the tail, or nose hook them, which would be basically right where that loop is on that lure. Just basically right straight through there. And that's exactly, basically how your bait would be rigged. And this, this technique don't only just work for rats. I mean, everything's gonna eat that right there. From mangrove snapper to 40 inch snook. Now, I use the almost exact same rig with live pinfish and live shrimp. But I always vary my hook, either from a two op to a one op with live shrimp, or if I'm using bigger cut baits or bigger live baits, I'll jump up to a three op. Now, if I'm using a cut bait, so to speak, I'd use a cut bait about three inches long, cut pinfish, cut ladyfish, cut mullet, three to four inches. And instead of tying the loop knot, I tie a standard knot onto either a two aught or a three aught. Uh, if I find that the two aughts that you end up getting more than one fish ends up swallowing the hook when you're using a cut bait, then I'll end up popping up to a three aught to keep that issue from happening. And then I just do a standard knot, like a uni knot, fisherman's knot, any, you know, the knot that you like that you have the most confidence in. I have the most confidence in the uni knot. And a cut bait, you just basically hook it on the thinner part of the body. 
I don't have anything to cut to show you guys. Should have had some frozen pinfisher here or something that I could have cut and shoot. I actually showed you guys, but I will show you guys at some point. So now when you're rigging live shrimp, when you're tossing live shrimp in the mangroves or putting them on a cork or whatever you want to do, I usually will drop down to 20 pound fluorocarbon most of the time. So when I rig live shrimp, a lot of people you'll see them hook them in the head like this. I don't like that. I'll go straight underneath them, right in the base of the tail, come straight up through the top. Just like that. And that's how I rig my shrimp. And that's literally, we've had great success on everything. You know, usually use, jum I usually like to use jumbo shrimp when I'm tossing for bigger redfish. Um, regular shrimp or whatever you buy will work. But just knowing that a bigger shrimp usually entices a little bit bigger redfish. So that's basically how we rig up for a lot of red fishing this time of year coming up. Even actually, it's how we rig all of our live baits and cut baits all year long for redfish. Uh, you know, when you're fishing around the mullet schools and stuff, and you're using cut baits or you're, you're pitching live pinfish on corks. I mean, basically the, the two op circle load will be your best friend. And like I said, I always run 30 just because it's about that happy medium of you hook a big fish that's really oversized, you're gonna have enough strength to hold it. I've used 20 in the past and I've had a lot of pop-offs due to either getting frayed off or getting into the mangrove co cover and catching an oyster. Um, I don't know, me and Brandon lost probably, I know I lost a couple big bulls this year due to that reason of running 20, being dumb. You know, but it happens. So next we're gonna move on to talking about artificials. There is a laundry list. So I use basically two soft plastics when I'm tossing to soft plastics due to, I do fish with a lot of unexperienced fishermen. Not talking about Brandon, I'm talking about like if my fiance goes or Brandon's wife goes, they're not the most experienced people fishing. So we basically kind of simplify it a little bit. So my go-to's, these last usually are the Z-Man scented paddlers in Houdini and Redfish Toad color. They work absolutely great. I haven't had any complaints with them. They're a little bit tougher than a DOA or anything like that. But don't get me wrong, a DOA paddle tail or a jerk chat are still great baits. I just don't use them a whole lot. And then you got the tried and true gulp. The new penny and then the new penny with the chartreuse tail. The white works good too. I use a lot of white too. I just didn't have any. I haven't stocked back up. These work great on days that the reds are eating smaller baits. They're not quite, you know, and when you're not in as much pinfish because these stupid things get tore up by pinfish all day long and puffer fish. They always end up messing you up, it never fits. And then like I said, the DOA, Cal, the paddlers and the jerk chads work great. I just, you know, I have them. I throw them every once in a blue moon. I've just found that when I'm in areas, the flats that we fish a lot, have a lot of puffers and a lot of stupid pinfish. So the Z-Man lasts longer. And, uh, another good bait is Live Target. Makes a great bait. This little greenback slash white bait looking swim bait. They make them in two sizes, this size, and they make a bigger one. They're heavy and but and they don't really work that well and super, you know, under two and a half feet, they don't really work that well. They get kind of weeded up. But this single catch everything. It, it works phenomenal. And it's super easy to use. You just cast and rig. That's it. You know, adjust your speeds. And then hard twitch baits. Always a great bait, a Mirrodine. You can never go wrong with a Mirrodine. I literally own almost every color. I, I have hundreds of Mirrodines. I even, besides what's in the boat, I have extras hanging on the wall. You, you just, you can't go wrong. I, I keep so many of them, they, it's, they, they work. Tarpon, everything. Oh, and a bait I almost forgot, and Brandon might shoot me if I don't mention it. A DOA. Terrorize. Stupid thing does not look like anything, but it catches some crazy amounts of fish. We've had 
multiple reds. We've hooked several nice tarpon on it. Have we gotten snook on it? Okay. I think we've got a couple smaller snook on it. And I don't know why. It just looks like a hunk of plastic. It doesn't really resemble anything, but it works great. I, it still blows my mind on why it works so well, but it does work. So when you're rigging up the gulp and the DOA cowl and stuff, you put them on a jig head. And I mainly just use one jig head that works for everything because I do have smaller paddle tails in the Z-Man and because they're made out of that Elastec material, whatever they're made out of, hard to get on jig heads. So I use a lot of the Z-Man product jig heads, the trout eyes, work great on the Gulp and on the DOA too, along with they hold a Z-Man very well. And they're super easy to rig, I'll show you guys that in a minute. On the scented paddlers, I like to throw them on a weedless hook that looks like this, which I will show you what they actually look like better outside of a package because I have them on a rod right now. This one's been around for a little while, but it's jointed, so you don't have to tie a loop knot on it. You can just tie a standard knot, and you can rig loop weedless. And they work phenomenal for these. They don't work that good with the jerk shads, but for the descended paddlers, they work great. Guys, so I'm gonna show you guys how I rig the Z-Man scented paddlers on the, the Texas Eye. I'm gonna show you guys how to rig it on there how it sets and what I like how I like to tie it. So first step is you definitely gotta tie it on your leader. And I like to use again I like to use I like to use 20 pound fluorocarbon on my artificial rods unless I get into a lot of bigger snook that have really sharp gill plates due to the fact that when you know they just you know, like the fray line a lot more than you know a red does but so Basically when I'm tying one of these on, I don't worry about a loop knot or nothing. I just do a standard uni. So I do, I go up. And you kind of fold the line back over top of itself. Like this. And it's hard to see because it's 20 pound. But kind of like that. And as it's that's better. As it's laying flat on top of each other like that, you just wrap it about five times. It's probably not five, but, and that's what it's gonna look like. All right, and then you usually put some slive on there so you don't, you know, friction wise. So then you just grab your, two, your tag in and your main line, and pull it tight, slide it down, cinch it down sure it's nice and cinched and there's how I rip tie that on clip your tag end off all right so what I'm doing now is I got my z-man and I got my hook so I'm gonna take this hook and we'll go out the bottom of this z-man right there that's how right there out the bottom facing just like that slide this all the way up to this little lure keeper that's right here it's not supposed to do that, this one's broke, it's an old one. Slide it past it, and it's gonna sit just like this. All right, spin it around. This had to sit straight. And you basically wanna line up to where you're gonna want that hook to come out of. So you're gonna want that hook coming out right about here. Fold it over, give it some slack, and these Z-Man have cuts in the bellies of them, so that the hook kinda sits in better. Stick it out. And then it's gonna go down just like that, okay? Slide it up to the tip, and I actually, I grab a little bit of it on the side and push up and just kind of stick that tip just barely underneath the Z-Man. Just like that. And that's exactly how it rigs. Now you can either slow walk this across the bottom, bounce it, jig it, you know, you just gotta kind of figure out the feel of the fish for that day. And that's, this has been, my go-to lure for the last couple years and I haven't had I've had great success with it so I will show you guys next how to put a standard jig head and I'm gonna be use a uh, DOA I will not gonna pull out the golf because you know they stank pretty bad and uh, yeah 
they kind of dry out once you open them. So again, I'm gonna rig this with a loop knot so that it gets the best action. So I'm gonna do my canoe man loop knot again. Just fold, fold, get two loops like that, put the second loop in the first one, pinch them together, leave your tag end out, put it in the eye of your jig head, you got it sitting just like this. Take your tag end, put it through your second loop. I got big fingers, it's hard to grab 20. There we go. Oops. All right, and then I, I like to pull down to, to my hand, you know, hold downwards towards the jig and snug everything up. And there we go. Just like that, loop knot. Turn off your tag end. All right, so basically what you wanna do is kinda of wanna lay your jig next to your bait to see, to see how it's gonna look and kinda of figure out where you want that hook to come out of. So you want that hook to come out of right about here, so I just kinda of mark it off with my thumb. Take it through the front, come up, get to about where your thumb is and come out just like that you got it like that and i'll just slide it past your little barbs here that are the keepers there you go now you got a doa rigged on a jig head ready to rock and roll this right here will basically catch you anything too i like throwing the white doas and the uh i guess it would either be a new penny or a root beer with a chartreuse tail and the black and the gold work pretty good too. And you know, on my artificial rods, I throw a seven foot six again, just for the extra casting distance, or the 2500 to a 3000 with a 10 pound power pro. This is my go-to rig. It's a bull bay sniper for the Pen Clash 2500. It's my favorite rod of the bunch. All right guys, so the tips Dustin gave you, I hope they help you guys out catch fish. We're going to kind of try to do these videos maybe once a week or once every two weeks just to kind of, you know, give some tips on how we rig for fish. Yeah, guys, uh, let us know if these, uh, you know, comment below if these tips did help too. Uh, if you guys go out and you do use some of these tips and they help you do catch, get on some decent fish, let us know, you know. It's uh, nice to know that, you know, what we're telling you guys is actually helping. So if you guys like this video, make sure you guys drop us a like. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel for more and we'll see you guys next week. Later.